In this video, I'm going to show you how to retouch from start to finish. Before we start, if you want to retouch fast and level up your retouching skills, you should check out my retouching actions pack. You should also check out these amazing presets and LUT packs. The links will be in the description below. Let's do this. So this photo was shot by Domo Shot Me, an amazing photographer. I'll put the link to his Instagram account in the description below. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to make a copy of this background layer. I'm going to hold control and then I'm going to press J on the keyboard to make a copy. And then I'm going to go on my tools here and then I'm going to select the patch tool here. I'm going to zoom the photo in just a bit. I'm going to remove the blemishes using the patch tool. And I'm going to select the pimple. I want to replace this pimple with this clean part. Let go somewhere here. So I'll make a selection here and then I'll let go somewhere here. So I'll keep doing this until I remove all the blemishes and then I'll move to the next step. So this is our before, this is our after, this is our before, this is our after. So the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to do the frequency separation. If you want to learn how to make the frequency separation layers, you can check this video. In this video, I'm going to use the action to do the frequency separation. So I'm going to go to my actions here. If you can't find this action button, just go to window, select action here. I'll put the frequency separation action, the description, you can just go in the description and download the frequency separation. I'm going to put my retouching actions pack in the description. You can download my retouching actions pack. There are about 22 amazing actions which you are going to find in my retouching actions pack. This photo is a 16-bit image. You can see here there is 16 or you can just go to image. You go to mod and then you see 16-bit. If it was, uh, let me just change it. If it was an 8-bit image, you see 8 here, but this is a 16-bit image. I'm going to go to mode and then I'm going to select 16-bit. So I'm going to go to my action panel and then I'm going to select frequency separation 16-bit. I'm going to play it and then this box is going to pop up. This is where I'm supposed to control how soft I want a skin to be. So I'm going to take the radius back to 0 0.1. I'm going to select the place or the area in the photo that has a lot of textures. So I'm going to select this. I'll start adding more radius until I stop seeing the textures. Let me just go with the radius value of 15. So it's not like every time when you are editing your photo, you're going to use the radius value of 15. No, the radius value is going to go with the textures that are in the photo that you are working on. The megapixels, the size of the image, all those things determines the radius that you are going to use in your photo. In my photo, I'm going to use the radius of 15 and then I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to go to my frequency separation folder. I'm going to open it. And then I'm going to select the high frequency copy here. I'm going to go to my tools. And then I'm going to select the cron stamp tool here. So I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller. I'm going to alt, alt, alternate on the keyboard. And then I'm going to left click with my, my mouse. And then I'll just start painting on the blemish that I want to remove. Let me make the brush a little bit smaller again, and then I'm going to add out, then I sample, then I paint like that. So the next thing that I'm going to do I'm just going to soften in the skin. I'm going to go to my frequency separation folder and then I'm going to select the low frequency copy and then I'm going to go to my tools. And then I'm going to select the left so tool. I'll set the feather to 20 pixels. So I'm going to make a selection like this and then I'm going to go to filter, blur and then I'm going to select the Gaussian blur. So if you remember when I was doing the frequency separation, I used the radius of 15. So I'm going to multiply 15 by three. Just type 45 here. If I feel like the radius is too much, I can just reduce the radius, but I'm not going to go above 45 pixels. 45 pixels is my maximum radius. And then I'm going to click OK. So I'm going to make a selection here. And then I'm going to go to filter. 
blur and then gaussian blur just click ok i'm going to make a selection here then i'm going to go to filter blur gaussian blur or i can just hold alt plus control plus f on the keyboard to just repeat this process so i can just click here so i'll keep doing this i'm going to select the nose then i'm going to go to filter blur and then gaussian blur i don't want the nose to look flat so i'm going to reduce the radius value to maybe 30 just type 30 here and then i'm going to click ok right click and then i'm going to deselect so these are before these are after these are before these are after i'm not going to remove these small lines because i want this photo to look as realistic as possible so i'm going to go to my actions let me just close the frequency separation folder i'm going to go to my actions and then i'm going to select the macro dodging and burning i'm going to go to my dodging and burning folder i'm going to open it and then i'm going to select the dodge I'm going to go to my tools here then i'm going to select the brush tool i'll set the opacity at 100 percent i'm going to set the flow at two then i'm just going to to dodge this part on the other side So these are before, these are after, these are before, these are after. So I'll proceed with the macro dodging and burning. And if you want to see more videos from me, please subscribe and smash that bell icon so that when I put up my next video, you will be notified. Don't forget to like. These are before, these are after. I'll put the link to the teeth and eye whitening action in the description below where you can just download it. I'm going to close the macro dodging and burning. And then I'm going to go to my actions and then I'm going to select the teeth and eye whitening. I'm going to open the teeth and eye whitening folder and then I'm going to select the photo filter. And then I'm going to go to my tools here. With the brush selected, I'll set the opacity to 100%. The flow, I'll set it to 100%. And then I'm going to whiten the eyes. So since the layer mask here is black, set the foreground color here to white. Press X on the keyboard to switch between the white and the black foreground color so i want the white foreground color so i'm going to press x i'm going to proceed with um, whitening the eyes i'm going to zoom out so these are before these are after if you feel like the effect is too much, just go to opacity here and then reduce the opacity to maybe maybe 30%. These are before, these are after. I'm just going to close the teeth and die whitening folder. I just feel like the reds are too much. I want to reduce the reds. So I'm going to go to my actions and then I'm just going to select reduce reds. So these are before, these are after. I'm going to go to opacity here and then I'll reduce the opacity to maybe 50%. So these are before, these are after, these are before, these are after. The next thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to add some contrast to this photo. I'm going to go to my actions and then I'm going to select light contrast. I'm just going to click here. You can see we've added some contrast, the shadows and the highlights. So these are before, these are after. If I want, I can just reduce the opacity. These are before, these are after. The next thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to even the skin. I'm going to go to my actions and then I'm going to select skin even. So these are before, these are after, these are before, these are after. The overall skin of the image is now matching. These are before, these are after. If I want to remove the effect from this part, I'm going to go to my tools and then I'm going to select the brush. Since the layer mask here is white, I'm going to set the foreground color to black. I'm going to click this icon. I'm going to select the layer mask. I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger and then I'll just paint where I don't want the effect to be. Like I don't want the effect to be here. So I'll paint here. Now these are before all the adjustments. These are after. So the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to do the dodging and burning. I'm going to go on the skin even adjustment here. I'm going to go to my actions and then I'm going to select the dodging and burning checker. This is going to guide me with the places that I'm supposed to dodge and the places that I'm supposed to burn. The brighter part of the image, these are the places where I'm supposed to dodge. And then the darker part of the image, these are the places where I'm supposed to burn. So I'm going to go to my actions and then I'm going to select the global dodging and burning. 
I'm going to open the global dodging and burning folder. I'm going to select the dodge with the brush selected. I'm going to set the flow to two, opacity at 100%. Since the layer mask here is black, I'll set the foreground color to white. And then I'll just dodge this part like this. So if you want to learn the best way to do the dodging and burning, you should check this video. Let me disable the dodging and burning checker. So these are before, these are after, these are before, these are after. So I'm going to select the burn and then I'm going to enable the dodging and burning checker. I'm just going to burn the shadows. So I'm going to burn this part like this. So let me disable the dodging and burning checker. So these are before, these are after, these are before, these are after. So if you feel like the effect is too much, you can just reduce the opacity of the dodge. You can just reduce the opacity of the burn. I'm going to reduce the opacity of the burn to maybe 50%. Then I'm going to reduce the opacity of the dodge to maybe 40%. This are before, this are after. I'm going to make this image stand out more. I'm going to close the dodging and burning folder. I'm going to go to my tools. On the pen tool here, I'm going to select the curvature pen tool. I'm going to make a point here. I'm going to make another point somewhere here. I'll make a point in the middle. I'll push it out. I'll just click here to join the selection like this. Then I'll make a point. And then I'll push it out like this. Then I'm going to right click and then I'm going to select make selection. I'll use the radius value of 10. And then I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go down on this adjustment layer and then I'm going to select curves. I'll make a point in the middle of the curve. I'll push it out and then I'm going to go to filter, blur, and then I'll select the Gaussian blur. I'll just type 90. I'll use the radius of 90 and then I'm going to click OK. If I want, I can reduce the opacity to maybe 40 percent. I'm going to go on opacity. I'll reduce the opacity to maybe 40 percent. So these are before, these are after. I'm going to make a point here and then I'm going to make another point somewhere here. I'll make a point in the middle, I'll push it up, I'll join it here, and then I'll make a point, I'll push it out, and then I'm going I'm going to light click, and then I'm going to select make selection, radius 10, and then click OK. I'm going to go to adjustment layer, then I'm going to select curves, I'll make a point in the middle, I'll push it down. Then I'm going to go to filter, blur, then Gaussian blur, radius 90, and then OK. I'm going to make a point here, another point somewhere here. Make a point, I'll push it up, and then I'll join it like this. I'll make a point, I'll push it down. I'm going to light click, and then I'm going to select make selection. Radius 10, click OK. I'm going to go to adjustment here, and then I'm going to select curves. I'll make a point in the middle, I'll push it down. Then I'm going to go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. I'll use the radius of 90, and then I'm going to click OK. If the effect is too much, I can just reduce the opacity to 35%. I'm going to select even this, and then I'll reduce the opacity to, to 40%. This are before, this are after. I'm going to select the curve, this one, the one which is on top, and then I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard, and then I'm going to select this other curve. And then I'm going to hold control and then I'm going to press G on the keyboard to put this adjustment into a group, control G. And then I'm going to double click here and then I'm just going to name this contouring. Let me close this. So these are before, these are after, these are before, these are after. So the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to color grade the image. I'm going to go down here on adjustment layer. And then I'm going to select the color lookup and then I'm going to go to load 3D LUT. Then I'm going to select the load 3D LUT. Let me just make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to color grade this photo using my wedding LUT pack. So I'm going to start with the champagne. So these are before, these are after. If you feel like the effect is too much, just reduce the opacity to maybe 50%. I'm going to go back to load 3D LUT. Then I'm going to select load 3D LUT. I'm going to select the crisp brown. So these are before, these are after, these are before, these are after. If you feel like the effect is too much, you can just reduce the opacity. So I'm going to go back to load 3D light. 
and then I'm going to select the fountain. So these are before, these are after, these are before, these are after. Let me close this. I'm going to reduce the opacity to maybe 20%. Like this. So these are before all the adjustments. These are after, these are before, these are after. So I'm going to make a visible stamp player. I'm going to hold control plus alt plus shift plus E on the keyboard. I'm going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to select the pen tool. Then I'll make a point here. I'll make another point here. Make another point somewhere here. Make another point here. Make another point here. Another point here, another point here, another point here. I'm going to go back to my pen tool. Then I'm going to select the curvature. Make a point here, push it out. Make a point here, push it out. Make a point, push it out. Keep doing this. I'm going to right click. And then I'm going to select make selection. Radius, I'll use the radius of five, and then I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go to my tools, and then I'm going to select the clone stamp tool. So let me just zoom it in. The reason why I added this line, I want, if I sample this part, I'm going to hold out, and then I sample this part. If I push it here, I don't want it to go outside my selection. So if I sample this part, and then I just don't want it to go outside my selection like that. So I'll keep doing this. I don't want the makeup to be all over the place like this. I want it to just follow the shape of this line. I'm going to select the rectangular marquee tool here. Light click. I'm going to select select inverse. The effect is not going to happen inside this selection, the effect is going to happen outside my selection. So I'm going to go to my tools and then I'll select the clone stamp tool. I'm going to add odd here to sample this part and then I'll push it in. So I'll keep doing this process. So I'm going to go to my tools, then I'm going to select the marquee tool here. Right click and then I'm going to deselect this. This are before, this are after, this are before, this are after. I'm going to go to my actions here and then I'm going to select the burn. I'm going to select the brush. I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger. I'll zoom it in, set the flow to two, or pass it to 100%. I'll just bend this part. So make sure the foreground color is set to white. Since the layer mask here is black, just paint the lips here so that we can just add some dimensions to the lips. I'm going to go to my actions. I'm going to select the dodge and then I'll just dodge this part. I'm going to select the dodge. Then I'm going to hold shift and then I'm going to select burn. I'm going to hold control plus G to put them into a group. So these are before, these are after. Let me zoom out. These are before, these are after. If you want to retouch fast and level up your retouching skills, you should check out my retouching actions pack. The link will be in the description below. And if you want to see my top two editing techniques, you should check this video on top. And if you want to learn how to retouch using my retouching actions pack, you should check this video down here. I'll see you in the next one.